Uh, this whole plan started back two years ago when we started uh, the community engagement process to come up with a strategic plan for our school district. Uh, over 300 community members, uh, which included teachers, parents, uh, administrators, students, uh, all got together to decide what is it that we want our school district to look like. And from that, we developed six goals. And uh, this is a process that took six months or a year to develop. Um, but one of the goals that we looked at was what was called the student life goal. And in that student life goal, there was um, an expectation, uh, a vision to create a behavioral standards for our students. Not just how they would behave here in the school, school building during a traditional school day, but how they would behave at extracurricular activities, functions when they were going out representing, representing Bissara students and what that would look like and how they would act. Um, it called for a subcommittee of the student life goal area to look at behavioral standards. Now within those behavioral standards, um, you talk about you know, what is the, the, the things that we want to prepare kids for. And our job and responsibility is to prepare them for the next step in their life. And um, the behavioral committee really looks at uh, several pieces, but one of them is, is appearance. What students come to school? What are, how do they look? What do they wear? And uh, even though we've tightened down on our dress code policy within uh, the, the district over the last couple of years, they're still very free to wear what they want to school. And uh, what this uh, subcommittee has done is to uh, reach out to business in the community and what is the expectation for students when they enter the workforce or they enter college, what is the expectation as far as dress code goes. And so we're really trying to, with this subcommittee, to, to go out, reach out to community members, to parents, uh, to businesses, and see what is it that we want our students to, 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 to look like. And uh, so that's really how this whole thing got started. Uh, the ball has picked up and started rolling. Uh, we have a committee ma members made up of uh, 25 or, uh, 20 to 25 people from the community. And uh, the next step in this is to reach out then to the community and, and really get feedback from them on what they think about uh, the possibility of, of changing the dress code. Uh, one of those options may be a campus wear uh, policy where uh, it's, it's uh, a more of a pro professional dress for our students to be able to wear when they come to school. We want to, uh, as a school district, we're, we feel that one of our uh, major goals is to prepare students for the next step in their life. And are we doing our job of preparing students if we turn a blind eye to the expectation of appearance, the expectation that you know you have to be respectful and responsible? And we've had an attendance policy in our district for years. Why do we have an attendance policy? Because the expectation is when you get a job that you have to show up to work every day or you won't have that job anymore. Uh, why do we have uh, drug testing for the last seven or eight years in our, in our district with regards to extracurricular activities and clubs and organizations? Because when you enter the workforce, the, you're expected to be drug free. And so one piece that we're missing is, is, is the dress code piece. And uh, so it, it's time to have those conversations to say, can we do a better job as a school district in making students realize what is important when they take that next step in their life? The, the biggest piece I hope to accomplish is, is to reach out to all the stakeholders, the parents, the community, the students, the staff, and see do they feel this is also a piece that's important? And if so, if you strongly have an opinion one way or the other, please share those and your reasons for that um, so that we can, ha we can start that dialogue, we can continue to have the, those conversations and so that as a school district, we can uh, ultimately, the, a decision will have to be made on whether you know, a dress code, campus wear policy is right for our district. And uh, if it's right, we wanted to have ample opportunity for everybody to weigh in on, on their opinions. Yes, I would. I, and, I, and I have to say that with some reservation because I've been here for 20, this is 27 years now. And if you would have asked me this question maybe, uh, maybe 20 years ago, I think I would have been, uh, you know, no way. Uh, you know, it's just, I think it infringes on 
the rights of kids and you know I had kids that were very young at that time and I, I just didn't think it was necessary you know now that 20 years have went by um, and I've seen how the change in kids have went over the years and 20 years is a significant time and now that I'm in this role um, as a as a disciplinarian but as as a leader of this building, I, I would like to see kids dress better and uh, have, a, I guess, maybe a little bit more um, discipline within themselves. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that happen. Okay, I, you know, the appropriate policy, I would like to see, s certainly, uh, I want to say the word casual. Uh, casual needs to be part of it. Um, you know, basically some khaki pants, uh, you know, the, the, the beige color pants, the black pants, um, certainly school colors in shirts. Um, we have the Oxford type shirt, um, uh, the, the pullover shirts, uh, what, what's, the what's the other? Uh, yeah, the button down type shirts, you know, white, red, black. Uh, possibly maybe a small emblem here that, uh, you know, promotes Bucyrus. Um, Closed-toed shoes. Uh, I've seen, you know, slippers nowadays, uh, as inexpensive as they are, um, they, uh, what they call them the thongs or uh, flip-flops, uh, kids may call them. Um, they're unsafe. Um, uh, if we do all that, um, obviously socks too, but if we do all that, uh, there's still an issue though that, that needs to be um, considered is the, um, the, the hair. I, I've seen many kids come in with just multicolored hair and the piercings throughout the face. And we're talking about, and it goes back to this old saying, many people have heard it before, you dress for success. Um, that's basically a type of an interview type deal when you, when you want to go for an interview, you, you dress appropriately. Uh, and I've told kids many times before, there's a, there's a time and place for everything. Um, you know, on the weekends when I go out to the farm to work, I dress a certain way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got my chainsaw out and I've got some old shirts on and pants on. But when I come to work, this is a place that it needs to be distinguished. and. Uh, I know one of the teachers here in the building, Mr. Schuster, um, he's told me many times, hey, when I come to school and I have a tie on and I, I feel like a teacher. And uh, I, I appreciate that, him saying that. Uh, and, our, and our students, though, um, they need to dress also for success. And like I said, 20 years ago, uh, it wasn't so bad, but I think as years have went by, we've, we've degraded uh, uh, our, our dress here at school and it needs to be addressed and you know, certainly don't want to shove it down anybody's throat by any means but uh, uh, help students along the lines in making better decisions on how they appear. The word I want to focus on is preparation. We prepare kids in this building academically we, we prepare them for college, we prepare them for the next level of education, and we would like to prepare those kids, those students that may not go on to a technical school or a college to be productive people in this community. And, you know, I can walk around this community and I see Pepsi drivers that are in uniform. I can see um, uh, people who work in the banks. They are suited up uh, in a tie. Now, I'm not saying that we have to do that, but uh, there is an expectation at every job that you go to, uh, whether it be working at an area convenience store, even behind those desks, we have people wearing, if you'd want to say, a uniform or a top. Um, in doing so, in having kids have some discipline about themselves, I think that is going to, in turn, spill over into the classroom, that uh, kids are going to be dressed appropriately, uh, the teachers are going to have less issues with dealing with um, this, the saggy pants that, that we deal with here, and, and I deal with that every day. 
Um, you know, I, I have a, um, a faction of students in this, in this building, uh, young gentlemen, who we consistently as teachers have to waste time in having them pull their pants up. Uh, it, it's inappropriate. Um, we have uh, young ladies who, um, in their revealing nature on their tops, is, it's too much. And once again, it's inappropriate. And we're wasting time dealing with issues like that that, you know, um, on our end, we shouldn't have to. We ask so much of our teachers to do so much in a condensed amount of time that we have them. that when they get in the classroom, that's what they want to do. They want to teach. And they don't want to have to deal with issues of, of dress. Um, I end up then being the heavy, in, which is fine in trying to monitor these things. But then once again, it cuts down on my time in, in dealing with other issues. Uh, um, keeping this building safe uh, is, is one of our top priorities. And when I have to deal with, um, I want to say, things of, of dress issues, that's taking me away from points in this building that, uh, that where I need to be to help students and teachers uh, be safe. Um, I think the overall climate of the building, uh, when everybody is dressed this way, uh, I think they're going to look around. They're going to say, hey, you know, in the end, this is a good thing. But initially, if it would ever be implemented, uh, we will certainly have people who uh, won't, won't want to buy into it, and uh, hopefully we can bring them along. Yeah, so we put together uh, this work that we're doing with the Dress Code Subcommittee. Uh, some of the options that we looked at were uh, ranged anywhere from keeping the current policy and doing uh, different things with enforcement, uh, taking the current policy that we have and it, making some adjustments to it, adding, deleting some things to, to, to clean it up a little bit. We're looking at campus wear option. Uh, and we also went as far as some suggested that we should go as far as school uniforms. And we felt that of all the options, school uniforms is the least appealing for our community or for our school because it's so inflexible, it's so stringent and regimented, and uh, we didn't think that's a fair um, a fair way to impose any of these types of changes on a school, on our children, on our community because simply um, our, our dress code subcommittee felt that that's not the direction we needed to go in this district. I do and we, we're looking at options in terms of um, helping uh, our, our families. We have a lot of families that are struggling economically right now and we're, our goal is to be able to outfit students in a campus wear uh, for ranging anywhere from um, you know, 10 to $15 for an entire outfit um, uh, to as, as much as a family is, is willing to spend. And we're looking at different granting opportunities, building partnership with local clothing stores in the Marion, Galley, and Mansfield area, uh, talking to other school districts about what they do to help uh, families that are economically disadvantaged. Uh, locally, Galleon uh, City School District, they have a campus wear policy and we're really, uh, our dress code sub committee studied their policy pretty thoroughly and uh, tried to align our, um, our policy closely to theirs because we feel we have similar communities. Um, I know the Mansfield City School District has a campus wear policy as well that we also looked at, um, that we looked at Toledo Public Schools policies, Cleveland Metropolitan School District, uh, Johnstown, Monroe, uh, different school districts around the area. But locally, we really focused on what Galleon did with uh, when they implemented their dress code. Just that, just know that uh, there's no, been no decisions made that uh, we've tried, we've tried to, to start the conversations, the, the committee uh, that is made up of 20 to 25 uh, community members, parents, teachers, administrators, students, uh, is really hoping to get the information out in, in a multitude of ways, including our website and, uh, um, and, and community forum meetings, um, through the, the newspapers, the radios, the phone calls we're gonna be making home, so that there's, it's not a, um, 
of shock that we've been considering this. This is something that's been in the works for several months. We've tried to be open through our state of the schools, through our smoke signals, through our communications with our students and our parents. And this is just continuing that conversation and that dialogue. And uh, we're not going to rush the decision, but the, the, the ball is picking up steam as far as having those conversations. So that's really what I hope to get out of this. Um, I guess dress here at school, li like I said, over the years, I've been here for 27 years and I've, and I've seen um, it has degraded over the years. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't put an exact finger on a variable that causes it. You know, it's just, it's part of, of how our society has developed over the years. Um, uh, it just is. And, and somewhere along the line, somewhere along this continuum of time, I think we need to put our foot down and say, you know, enough's enough. We want to work with people. We want to, we want to establish uh, some goals here in this building. And uh, this is what we're going to tolerate, and this is what we're not. And by implementing this campus where we're basically saying this is what we're going to tolerate, and this is what we find um, acceptable in the building, and I guess I always go back to uh, what my father told me. And you know, e each one of us, as we've reared kids, um, we rear our kids similar to what our our parents have reared us. We've we've attached things in our in the way that we we raise our kids. And my dad, and mom were very conservative in nature, and I was very conservative in nature raising my kids also. But there's one thing my dad told me. Uh, and, and it, and it, it kind of goes in the athletic field, uh, court, however you might want to look at it. He says, listen, if you can't play basketball, if you're not a very good basketball player, the minimum you can do is look like one and look like a basketball player. And you know, after a while, I started believing that. And, um, and I was still, a, I think, a pathetic basketball player, but I felt like a basketball player. And I want to take that idea and bring it over into the academic field uh, and say, hey, you know, um, I, feel like a, I feel like a student, you know, um, and I'm going to just use the word, I guess the word undisciplined or very slobby looking. We can certainly do better here at this building and, and our kids can do better and we deserve better. So, you know, hey, let's look like students in this building and, and maybe we might start acting, acting like them too cut down on some discipline problems maybe. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, reiterate that no decisions have been made. Uh, nothing is etched in stone yet. This, um, we're just in the process of investigating this. We want to get uh, community feedback, student feedback, teacher feedback um, as we gather all that information and make the best decision uh, for the district. But right now we're in the planning stages, preparation stages, and uh, nothing has been finalized and we really hope that the community is willing to come out and uh, give us their opinion and share, share with their thoughts on uh, this direction that, uh, that we're looking to move.